Welcome to the College Audition Podcast with your host, nationally renowned college audition coach, Tim Evanicki. Hey everybody, Tim Evanicki here with the College Audition, back again with another episode of the College Audition Podcast. Today, my special guest is Andrew Abrams, musical theater co-coordinator at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Thanks so much for joining me, Andy. My pleasure being here. Thanks for having us. So, um, always want to get to know the person before the program, so I want to learn all about Andy and um, his career and and life choices that led him up to uh, his time at SIU. Sure. Well, thank you for asking. Uh, You know, theater people hate talking about themselves. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, I actually started out as an opera singer myself. Um, trained as an opera singer, that's what I wanted to do, and a you know pianist and, and a conductor, and I was a I was a classical music geek uh, when I was a kid. But I also liked theater. I was in plays. I loved I loved musicals, uh, and I started actually doing musical theater as a hobby uh, more than a career when I was in college, uh, getting my voice degree. And uh, over my time, uh, I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. That's also where I went to uh, for my undergrad. And so I've, since then, I've founded three different musical theater companies in Madison. Uh, the first one when I was 19. And uh, that theater company was sort of my hobby. And we did, you know, a musical directed the musicals in the summer and conducted them. And sometimes I was in them. Uh, and I realized after I graduated college with my voice degree that I was starting to really love musical theater um, even more than I, I loved opera. Um, and so when I went to New York, it kind of sort of said, you know, whatever takes me first. Uh, and the next thing I knew, I was, uh, I was on a national tour of uh, Kiss of the Spider Woman as an associate conductor. Um, and so that kind of led me through, uh, through my life in New York. I moved to New York City and uh, started working as a, as a musical director and a vocal coach. I, I, you know, right out of the gate, I was, you know, playing at AMDA and places like that. And, um, you know, as, as I was living in New York, I... Um, I was, I worked, you know, I was uh, also a composer. I, I, I was part of the BMI musical theater writing workshop for a couple of years. I got my equity card while I was out there and started doing some performing. Um, but I've always enjoyed uh, running mus- musical theater companies. And um, when I, I moved back to Madison for a while and started um, and, and is still going with a, a an equity theater company called Capital City Theater, which is a sort of vacillates between a Lort D and a, and an SPT uh, sized theater. Uh, We hire both equity and non equity actors. And when I'm not teaching at SIU, like right now in the summers, I'm, I'm working at my theater company. Um, I wrote a show uh, called, but I'm a cheerleader, the musical, which is based if anybody uh, has, if this has endured, there's a movie called But I'm a Cheerleader, which came out in uh, 1999, 2000, somewhere in there. And this is the musical of that. And uh, we're uh, hopefully going to be doing a uh, production of it in London this coming fall with the hope of it moving forward. So, uh, And so while I, was, while I was living out in New York City, I was also starting to teach on a lot, adjunct at a lot of various universities. Um, I, I, I was I taught at NYU for a little while at Pace University, um, New York Film Academy, um, and my last job while I was out there was at Hofstra University out on Long Island. Uh, I was really trying to get them to. They have a musical theater minor, and I was really gunning for them to try to get a musical theater major, but it just it just wasn't uh, it just wasn't happening. And so I. Um, I moved back to Madison to start this theater company, and while I was here, I sort of just applied for various jobs because I really love teaching. It's something I really enjoyed doing. And in fact, I was teaching college, other college students when I was a college student. So I was teaching them voice while I was still a college student. And so I've, I've been teaching for you know forever, uh, and I, I really, really like it. Um, we have a whole uh, conservatory attached to our theater company in Madison. So we, we teach, um, we also help prep uh, high school students for uh, their, co- their auditions, for college auditions as well, um, and help them, you know, to just get their skills down m- more than anything else. So that's kind of what has, has got me to SIU because I applied for SIU while I was running the theater company. And, and next thing I know, here I am um, at SIU. 
And how long have you been there? This coming fall just will be my third year. So I've only been there for two years. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot of <clears throat> sort of administrative work that goes along with being a co-coordinator um, at the program. But what do you actually teach uh, at SIU? When will the students come in contact with you during their time? Great. So I, um, they will be in contact with me the whole time because I teach, vo- I teach voice lessons. Um, I teach music theory. Uh, I get them for acting the song. I get them for musical theater history. I music direct most of the musicals. Sometimes I direct. Um, so they'll be they'll be having me the whole time. Um, I can say that you know when I when I started at SIU, I inherited a really. I, I know we'll get to this too, but I inherited a really. Um, well put together program that was perhaps not as as nationally known. People had had not heard of it, and the, one of the things that I'm really trying to do at SIU is to uh, you know make people realize that it's a really great program. It's this little diamond in the rough sitting in Southern Illinois, and um, I have some big ideas about how I want to grow it, which I'm sure will. We'll get to. I should also mention that my the person that I am co coordinator with is a gentleman named Daryl Clark, who is um, who is, who tends to do more of the dance side of things. That is definitely not my uh, skill set. So he's the he's he puts together all of our dance uh, our dance classes, and he teaches a, a good portion of them as well. It's great. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot like okay. I do with everyone. Please. You were sent the sample <laughs> questions ahead of time, but this is not on there. Um, but everyone else has gone through this. <laughs> you have 60 seconds to give me your elevator speech on the SIU BFA Musical Theater Program. The SIU BFA Musical Theater Program. Okay. Um, I think that uh, we, are, uh, we are basically a conservatory style program. Even though we are not officially a conservatory, the students can't do any other majors because all they can do is musical theater because they are pummeled with cl- of all the great classes in dance and um, acting and singing. Um, we, uh, we only take a small portion. We only take a class of 10 to 12 students every year, so which is really exciting because it means that the students get more attention. They get to get cast in more shows. Um, we uh, bring in a lot of amazing guest artists. We're going to start doing uh, workshops of new musicals. Um, we do a senior showcase for our seniors. They get seen by casting directors and agents. Uh, we help them put together a, a website. Um, and we do a four-show season every year. We do two musicals and two plays, and everybody can audition for everything. And we have an amazing faculty, and uh, the musical theater program is equally housed between the theater department and the music department. Uh, yeah. How's that? Um, that was... <laughs> ah, that, that was more was, than 60 seconds, sorry. <laughs> no, that was 59 seconds. Oh, was it really? So- Amazing. Yeah. And you that's know, all the time we have, so thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> you know, we musicians, like, we're so used to, you know, we're like, a minute. I think this is about a minute. You know, it's, in our, it's ingrained in our bodies. <laughs> wow, you just, you you touched on probably more than anyone else has uh, so far. And okay. I think this is, this is about our, our 19th episode, so <laughs> nice job. Thank um, you. We're going to go back and, and yeah. touch on some of those highlights that you just gave us uh, one at a time there. Um, so... Um, one of the first things that you talked about, uh, was the, um, the performance opportunities. I think Mm -hmm. that's one of, yeah. So let's go with the performance opportunities first. What, what does, uh, that look like as far as your season every year and, um, when are kids allowed to start auditioning? Right. So we don't do the whole, like your freshman year, you have to do tech kind of thing. Like we are, you know, not, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying we, because our program is smaller, we have we have students auditioning for shows right out of the gate. Like our auditions for our fall musical, which is this year's going to be world and the world goes round. Um, those auditions will be the second, you know, the first week of school, and the freshmen are are there, like they're there and encouraged to audition. I know they're still finding their footing, and uh, but we cast freshmen. We cast freshmen all the time. So um, we generally do four, you know, four shows, uh, two two musicals and two plays. Um, this year we're doing two musicals in one play only because we're coming, you know, just like a lot of the schools we're emerging out of COVID. So we're, uh, we're not like t- pulling out all the stops yet. Cause we're being a little cautious cause you know, none of us knows what's around the bend, but we all hope that it's good stuff. Um, we also have a new play festival that we do, uh, called the big muddy and that happens in February. And that is, uh, it's a nationally known, uh, new play works 
festival and the students are um, are cast in all of these short plays that new new playwrights are are writing. So they get that opportunity as well. Um, we have a big MFA directing and design program at, at SIU, which is, first of all, it's one of the things that I think makes our, our show so pretty. And I'm really like, I'm super picky when it comes to like shows looking good. And what, the thing that bowled me over about this program when I first got to SIU was that the show, like the photos, the videos, everything, the, the colors, uh, the lighting and, and set design is always like super amazing. But the directing MFAs all have to do all sorts of scenes and things for their degree. And they uh, are in various projects. They're outside of the season. So like um, sometimes our BFAs are are even um, over overstretched because they're in so many things. Um, so the performance opportunities never stop. And there's a also uh, there's also a um, student organization uh, called called Fierce, which is um, they them putting the students themselves doing a musical, and they're already planning on doing a full length musical next year, in addition to like various cabarets and things like that. So there really is no end to the amount of performing you do when you get wow. there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so outside of performing, um, can you sort of walk us through the, the four years? What's the experience like coming in as a freshman? What do you work on first year, second year, all the way through? Well, the first year, uh, so the first year is a lot about the intro technique. So like they all start voice lessons the minute they walk in the door. Like there's voice lessons for all four years um, and they start dance, dancing right away. They are usually taking two dance classes. Sometimes they take two dance classes in one day. Like they'll have ballet. I think they take ballet and tap the same day back to back their freshman year and then they're like in an intro to acting class and then they're still you know they're still taking care of some of their uh their gen eds during that freshman year but it's not um that I would still say that even their gen eds are in the minority of the classes they're taking most of the classes they're taking are are in um in musical theater in some way shape or form and as they progress through the the four years that you know their sophomore year they they already start taking acting the song and the acting the song class is spread out over the three years like they take it three years in a row uh and as they go up each year the level gets more difficult like one year it's more of a, a rep class and then it's another year it's more of a workshop class and you know so that they're they're they keep adding on to it uh they take musical theater history that's a that's a one semester class and then their acting classes start getting more uh, involved um daryl starts throwing in modern dance in there uh the levels start going up um, then they have various electives in the music and the theater department, and like like they can take uh, they can take dialects, they can take stage combat, they can take all these various things, and some of those are their choice. Um, but the whole time they're they're busy. I mean, <laughs> whenever I give them homework, I feel guilty, even though I shouldn't, because <laughs> they're like, "How am I going to get that done? I have to do this other thing for the." Other. I mean, that's every college student, right? But uh, <laughs> but I, you know, they they're there because they love it. So that's really what you know. And then their senior year, we have a, a their senior showcase is a class. So so that whole class is about putting together the senior coach showcase that they do for agents and casting directors, but it's also about the showcase they do on campus, which is a much larger uh, deal, which involves duets and um, you know group numbers and dance pieces and uh, things like that, as well as their solos. And that we film so that they can then cut and take stuff out of that for their reels and things like that, even though that showcase is on campus, it's not for the agents and casting directors, they can put that on their website and then they can share it with various agents and casting directors. So that senior showcase class kind of goes that all through their senior year. And we help them build those web, their websites too. Like we make, we, that's part of their assignment and we constantly are giving them feedback and so that by the time they leave, they're, um, they're in a really good place. You know, one of the things that, that we always say is your, your career starts your first day of your freshman class. It doesn't start once you graduate. You're already doing this the minute you're a freshman. So our, uh, you know, our, my mentality about it when, when a BFA shows up is our job is to, is to get you working. So another thing that we really focus on there is prepping them for summer stock auditions. We really help them prepare for SCTCs and KTNA1s um, so that they're ready to go with that sort of thing. 
Um, and you know they have a they have one class that they have to take in the summer that's like a um, like an internship where they have to do where they have to do backstage stuff because that's they have, of course they have those requirements as well where that's one of the classes another one is a lab where they have to they either have to work in the costume department or they have to work in the shop so that they're getting this like all encompassing idea of what happens in theater so they aren't just you know going to a theater company and they're not just you know they're an actor but like they understand the other aspects of of what's going on so you know we're preparing them and trying to get them work even while they're still in college hmm. um so they're not just, and then when we they graduate we don't just say okay well your, your four years are over bye see you later like we are always we tell them when they graduate like we're here like if you need connections if you need advice if you need you know music advice if you're going in for an audition should you should you do this should you do that i tell them i'm always here like i'm not going to be like i'm sorry you graduated i'm not going to give you that information anymore you know, it's like we're always here to help. So we shepherd. I always say we shepherd them. We don't. We don't take them for four years, teach them, and then say sayonara. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like we shepherd them through the process. So, so you mentioned yeah. uh, briefly that there's an on-campus showcase. So does that imply that you, you showcase elsewhere as well? Yeah. So our senior showcase, the, the the senior showcase for agents and casting directors, is something we just started and. We did it through the growing studio this year, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was such a weird year, you know, with everything going on. And mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, we, what they did was they had these regional um, senior showcase places, so that it was easier for schools to go. And we did them in person. And we actually went with this year. We went to Columbus, and we did it at Columbus. And I mean, they they had some really big people there and then after they were done they actually had the opportunity um to sit down with each casting director and agent for 10 minutes each and get feedback um, wow which was amazing and they all came away learning so much <laughs> yeah that's not common that's great. no and, and and i have i mean if it you know if everything works out and i hope that it does we have every intention of continuing working with the growing studio because what they offer and it wasn't even just that they offered like um shory walker is is one of the people that works there who i mm-hmm. turns out i knew from my time in new york from ages ago and so it was fun reconnecting with her but uh she, they offered us for, um all these workshops over zoom before they even went to the as i just they had a workshop in voiceover work they had a workshop in on camera acting they had a workshop in the business of the business she looked over all their resumes she looked over all their dance reels like it was uh amazing how much hands-on work they did to make sure our students were prepared Mm -hmm. um so we plan on doing that going forward as well oh great you picked an interesting time to start showcasing. <laughs> this, just yeah. as the whole premise of showcases are changing. I um, know. <laughs> but, um, all right. So um, y- I'm trying to think back to all the things you mentioned in your elevator speech. Um, but uh, you did mention something about minors and, and studying yeah. other things while you're there. So talk about what those opportunities so, are. And- absolutely. So like we don't. Uh, we, 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 they, they can do a double major. However, what we always tell them is it's going to take you five years mm-hmm. because there's so many credits in musical theater that, that they need for that degree that they can't possibly finish in four years. We actually had a, we just have a, we have a, a student that's joining our musical theater program in their sophomore year. They're already a student at SAU, but their education. And he's like, well, I want to do musical theater and education. And we're like, you know, you're going to be here for five years. And he's like, yep, I'm okay with that. Uh, so if you're okay, so if you're okay with that, I mean, I went to college for five years because I was a voice major. And like, you know, after four years, you're like, am I ready to do this? <laughs> you know, because it's not about the courses. It's about, am I ready to do this? You know, but um, it doesn't seem to be as common these days, but. Uh, if they're willing to do it, they can stay longer and do a double major. Otherwise, they're welcome to minor, and we have mi- they can minor in almost anything they want to at, at SIU. Um, mm-hmm. We have people minoring in communications. We have people. We have one student who's minoring in composition. We have a student who's minoring in psychology. We have you know. I mean, it, they they can minor, and that's the one thing they can still do and get out in four years. And how many credits is your BFA? Oh my gosh. That is a really good question. Oh, that and wasn't I'm, one of the sample questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I uh, I should know that. <laughs> we'll just we'll fill time with something else while you're looking it up on the <laughs> website. We can look it up on the website too. Don't worry about it. Yes. Uh, so it's it's let's see. It's thirty. 
It's 30 your freshman year. Oh, math. 27 okay. your sophomore year. Are you adding this up? <laughs> uh, 31 your junior year and and 30 your senior year. So it's probably like... So it's 16. 118 credits. There you go. Oh, that's it. Yeah, you did better than I would have done. Yes. Okay. There you go. All right. Oh, it's 120. Oh my gosh. It's at the top of the page. I didn't even need to add all of that. It's 120? <laughs> I didn't. I'm, there, it must have either, there must be some shifty ones in here like you could oh, or say, couldn't. Yeah. So like at the, we, we say 120 credits. All right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's 81 mm-hmm. credits in major of the major and it's 39 for mm-hmm. everything else. Great. So um, I'm going to ask you this question, too, because it just came up in a coaching with me today. And we were sure. uh, one of the important things of, uh, for one of my students I was working with today is um, the dance program mm-hmm. uh, that's there. And I know that's not your side of things. But the, the question is, um, do you level students as they come in so that every, or how does that work? That is a really good question. I will say that I think that the only drawback to having a small Uh, cohort like a small number in each class is that you know the university isn't going to allow us to have five people in a level you know what I mean they're just not so what ends up happening is we end up moving students up to the to a to like the next grade level so like if a freshman comes in and is an incredible dancer you know, Daryl's not going to put them in that beginning class. They're going to move them up with the sophomores. So while they can't level at their grade with their with their same, you know, other freshmen, they can at least move up to the grade above them and still be able to not have to start at a beginner mm. level. Okay. It's not a ide- look. It's not ideal. And and if we had a lot more students, we could we could do that. But um, we just don't. So that's kind of what limits us a little bit. What about uh, other things? Can students um, test out of music theory or is there, there anything? No, but they can test up. So, so they do have to take one year of music theory. Um, and actually recently I've been, I, this is actually kind of changeable at the moment because I was having this whole conversation with, uh, with the person that sort of oversees what the students have to be able to know when they, when they get there. And um, we were talking about this just this last semester, and I says, said, why can't our students just test out of music theory? And she said, you know, I don't see any reason why, if they were at a high enough level, they couldn't just test out of music theory. It's just that where we end up in music theory, most of our students couldn't completely mm-hmm. test out of it. But we do, we do separate them into 101 and a class that's that it's called 104A, which is which is assuming you've had all of this music theory and now we're moving you. Um, and then once you, if you, if you go right into that class, you only have to take it for a semester. Mm. So you're out of, mm. now I am a huge fan of, of saying that I think we need to have more music theory for our students so that they are better sight readers mm-hmm. and read music better. And that's, I'm making, I'm making a case for that. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping that's going to the change because that's the one thing that like we can't, have musical theater people out in the world who can't read music anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the one thing that I'm really adamant about. <laughs> it's, it's certainly a different world than it was, it, you know, it 30 is. years ago. No, it, um, and I would say, to. I would say 15 years. It's different than it was 15 years ago. Mm. I mean, when I was living in New York, not to get off tangent for a second, but when I was living in New York, uh, we actually did a, a reading of a new musical and that I wrote. And um, I would say that, and these were Broadway people. I would say that, more than half of them pulled out their recorders be- and said, I don't read music at all, so I need to record my part and practice it over and over. And I was just, I was completely blown away by that. And that was <laughs> what what year? How long uh, I'd say that? that was like 15 years ago, like tw- oh, 2005. Wow. I just said 30 years ago because that would have been before my time and I felt younger that way. But wow, 15? <laughs> yes, okay. 15 years ago when I was, you know, 20. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wasn't the one. Oh my gosh, neither was I. Um, all right, so um, you've only been there for three years. Yeah, um, well, so two other really. Than, two, yeah. <laughs> other than um, other than yourself, of course. Um, is there any notable alum or faculty that you want to um, highlight? Actually, i i was doing I was doing a little bit of uh, research on this. We have some. Biz- bizarrely famous people that went to the school. Some of them, I, I don't know, this was ages ago, but like Jim Belushi went to our school, Dennis Franz, Bob Odenkirk, and Melissa McCarthy went to our school. Really? Yeah. 
did Isn't that amazing? what was the what did Melissa McCarthy major in? I see that's the thing I don't know. I don't know if she majored in theater. I I have a feeling that she I, I shouldn't say that. I don't actually know. Um wow. but yeah, she went to SIU. Isn't that crazy? I mean um, I absolutely want to Wikipedia this now and see <laughs> What are you doing? Are you doing it whilst we speak? I am doing it right now. Um, <laughs> she, uh, uh, while, she, while you do that, I'll tell you yeah. we have a um, we have one student, uh, a student uh, named Zoe Jensen, who uh, has been on a national tour of Hamilton playing Eliza. Uh, she made her Broadway de- debut covering both of the girls in Dear Evan Hansen, and she was part of the premiere of a show called We Are Tigers that was off Broadway. So a lot of the younger uh, people know that. Um, we have a lot of alum who have done cruises and regional theater. Um, one of our alum, Nathaniel Washington, was in The Wiz at the Muni. Like, we, we've have, we have a, a fair amount that are out there doing it, so. Hmm. Um, Wikipedia says nothing about her going to SIU. Oh, wait, there. She studied textiles <laughs> at SIU and was Great. interested in pursuing a career in fashion before she pursued a career in acting. Um, she moved uh. to New York City and performed as a drag queen uh, under the moniker Miss Y. That's Melissa McCarthy. Yes. Wow. Huh. This has gone huh. way off on a crazy tangent. Wow. But, um, a drag queen? Yeah. She, uh, she. It says right here she performed uh, as a drag queen under the moniker Miss Y, including at the Wigstock Festival. So. Wow. It must be like Connie and Carla kind of situation. Wow. Well, there you go. Textiles. I guess I wish I wish that you had studied theater. That would look better. Right. <laughs> but, you know, um, that didn't go. We might edit this out. Yeah, we'll that might not be a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's let's ring this back in because people are probably just staring at their uh, iPhones now, going, "What the heck are these two talking about?" That's so um, funny. So let's chat a little bit about um, the area where the school is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I always say at some point the students are going to want to leave the campus. So what is there what? to Never. do in the area? <laughs> What's student life like? Uh, well, the university. The nice thing about about SA is the university is pretty big and. Uh, so, I mean, we have a probably, I think we have ten to 12,000 students on our campus. And the campus is, uh, is pretty big. I mean, actually, the campus can accommodate even more than that. But the campus is large enough that they, the one thing I, I said, I think, in my, in my elevator speech is that, is that it's great for students who want a conservatory feel on a real college campus. So they get the, the conservatory feel with what we teach them, but they also, there's a football team. Our, our mascot is the Saluki, which I did not know what that was until I got to SIU. It is an Egyptian dog. Um, Ooh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, Salukis, fighting Salukis. Uh, our expression that we're told when we get there is everybody says is absoluki. Um, no. Which, no, yeah, I, I, whenever, when anyone says that to me, I roll my eyes and say, you're not allowed to say that ever again. And since I had the Google open, I just Googled it. It's a beautiful dog. It is. It's a really pretty dog. I mean, and, and, and there's a whole weird little Egyptian theme around that whole area of Illinois. So, so we're, spooky. yeah, so we're nestled, like we're really far south of Illinois. Like we're almost, this, there's a little part of this that like, people, are, there are a bunch of people that say it's the south. Like it is pretty much the south. We are... We are south of parts of Kentucky because we're like down in that little finger bottom part of, of Illinois. We're two hours from St. Louis. Hmm. So um, it's real easy, if, especially this, a lot of these students have cars. It's real easy to, to, to do a day trip to St. Louis. Um, we're only about 30 miles from the Mississippi River. Um, Cape Girardeau is just across the river from us. Um, we, you know, the, the um, area around Carbondale is, is beautiful. I mean, the, the nature, we have the Shawnee uh, Forest there. We have um, national parks that are absolutely beautiful. Uh, nothing is flat down there. It's real hilly. We have wineries all over the place. Of course, they can't go to those till they're juniors. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the town itself is real diverse, uh, especially where it is. And um, because it's an old uh, coal and carbon mining town. Uh, So it's been around for a real long time. 
Um, and so it's it's very diverse. There's it, it, there, everything is convenient there. Like every possible like if you are a fan of chains, if you're a fan of, we just opened a, a brand new Starbucks, which is very exciting for us. But um, every you know, there's Walmart and Target and and, and every f- chain. And I mean, I mean, if you don't like that, there are all sorts of local restaurants that are lovely too. Um, but uh, it's very convenient. Um, and there's, there's just lots. And we're also, one of the things that's really cool is we're on the train line. Like we have a train station in Carbondale that is directly on the train line to Chicago. So like you can hop on, I mean, yeah, it's four hours, but like you can hop on that train and just read a book and get to Chicago and it's super easy. Hmm. Um, so you've got the nature, you got the beauty, you've got the college life, you've got St. Louis and Chicago within your grasp. Um, and I should also add that, um, one of the things that I've created, uh, because I have this, this, this equity theater in Madison, Wisconsin, which is actually about six hours away. I mean, we're six hours North of, of, of Illinois, of Carbondale, um, is we're doing like a little corridor with SIU where we're offering internships and even some roles in shows as internships to SIU students. So um, they will actually get a chance to, um, you know, do work with a theater company outside of SIU uh, when they're not in school. So that's one thing that I've sort of drawn a little, like made a kind of connection between the two cities so that there's a in fact, we have a student, we have two SIU students coming to Madison in a couple weeks to be part, uh, to do some internship work and to be part of our um, <clears throat> summer conservatory show that we do here in Madison. Wow. How do you manage uh, two very big jobs six hours apart from each other? That is such a good question. And I will let you know when I figured that out. <laughs> no, you know, we, <laughs> we throw our show, we throw our show, like, like we, we, we're doing, there's a show here we're doing in the fall, but I'm just not, I'm, I'm producing it. Like I'm, I'm helping put it together, but I'm not going to be here for it. And then, Got it. you know, we do another big show right when school's over in May. Um, we're doing great comet actually this year. Wow. Uh, in fact, I think we're doing a regional premiere of it. Um, and the off Broadway like way of doing it, which was the way I saw it and loved it. Um, but, um, and then we do a conservatory show in the summer for our students. Uh, so then I'm here for that. And then when we, you know, keep growing and add another show, I don't know what we're going to do, but, um, (laughs) that's how we do it. (laughs) That's Uh, how we do it. (laughs) Let's, uh, switch gears now and talk about auditioning for the program. Um, so we talk numbers first, usually when we do this. So how many pre-screen applications did you receive last year? We got about, uh, we got about a hundred pre-screens this last okay. year. Yeah. And then, um, of those, how many did you see, did you see for live auditions? Um, we, we saw about, I want to say we saw around 70 for live auditions, maybe mm-hmm. 60, somewhere in there. Um, because we really uh want to see people like we don't as much as you know we could not pre-screen and in fact we when when we were just doing live auditions uh because we just joined accepted this i should add we just joined accepted last year Mm -hmm. prior to that siu was not part of any online app um common app any of it so Mm -hmm. so they were they were literally just using word of mouth and unifies in chicago that was it Mm -hmm. And so uh, the numbers that were showing up for the live auditions were not a ton, um, but we didn't pre-screen because there just weren't that many, there just weren't a ton of students. This right. year when we joined Accepted, that all changed and we had a lot higher visibility um, and uh, people started hearing about us and realizing there was this you know, di- diamond in the rough as many of the students that came to camp. And they said it in a good way. It wasn't meant to be pejorative in any way. Uh, they realized and they all made, made these visits to campus and they loved it. Um, and so we started pre-screening just so that we could whittle it down a little bit. But we still really wanted to see as many people as we could in person and actually talk to them. Because I know you're, you're I mean, I know you're uh, going to ask me like what we look for in students too. And, and you know, one of the, th- and I'm, I'm mentioning this now because it's related to what we were just talking about, which is that, you know, we really look for nice people who are good humans. And, you know, obviously they have to be, have some talent, but, but if they're passionate about what they do and they're easy to work with and they're nice people and they're fun, 
Um, that goes so far. And I, I know we all tell our students over and over, be nice, to, be easy to work with and be yourself because that's truly what's going to get you cast. But it's so true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so true. Yeah. There, there's thousands of talented people out there. It's it's the ones that you want to work with. And, and I've said over and over again, just in this podcast, but my kids hear me say it all the time. You're not just auditioning for a musical theater program. You're auditioning for the role of student they can stand to be around for four years. <laughs> um, and that's that's important. I mean, the the, the perso- personal connection gets you accepted. The talent just gets you in the door. And, and we're auditioning for them, too. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. when, when they come for us to, to sing for us, we uh, we um, try to be as fun and and ourselves as we possibly can be in that audition. We don't sit there, you know, uh-huh, mm-hmm, okay. What do you have? What else do you have? Like, we don't do that mm-hmm. because you're going to work with us. You have to work with us for four years. Can you stand to be around us for four years? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of a mutual, like, you know, testing the waters to see, to see how it's going to work. But honestly, like, you know, if you, if you, if you have, a, if you're a good person and you have good personality and you're fun and, and easy to work with, Manny, we, we are very eager to take you. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. So uh, if people want to find out more about your program, other than obviously going to their website, what are, what's some good ways to learn about SIU? Um, well, the best way to go is to go is to is, is to do that is to go to our website. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's interesting because I was just, we're the interesting thing about this coming year is that we are. Um, we are actually reorganizing all of our all of our programs into um, a new school like like because you know how schools are like various especially in larger universities the schools are grouped under various umbrellas so we used to be the college of liberal arts for years apparently and now we're reorganizing into the college of arts and media so i think our websites are probably all going to shift soon but right now our website if, if, if do you want me to say it is that useful sure yeah okay yeah it's c it's c o l a which is college of liberal arts dot s i u dot e d u and then it's just backslash musical theater um that's it now we sp- <laughs> i can when i came into this program i was much dismayed to find out that we spell musical theater with an e r <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm such an R E like freak, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we spell it E R, and of course, I'm not gonna like make a big. Th- I'm not gonna say we gotta start changing how we spell theater. <laughs> <laughs> so people should know when they go to our website that it's spelled E R, so that they don't type in the wrong thing and get lost somewhere along the way. <laughs> but we have all sorts of stuff on there. We have alum. We do have alumni news on there. You can see our faculty on there. You know, we're a research university, so. Our our faculty is always doing stuff uh, professionally outside of the school. Um, we actually just hired um, we just hired a brand new uh, a faculty member uh, who's joining us for the first time this fall named Matt Matt Williams, um, who's coming from New York and has like a slew of ridiculous Broadway credits. And um, I'm so thrilled that he's coming. And uh, he already has all these these like. We even talked about you know zooming in Stephen Schwartz for a for a, a, a workshop with our students mm. this year. Like he's got some he's got some great connections out there. So you know the more people we have bring coming in like that, the the, the greater the net we can throw for our students to ex- get these experiences from, from these professionals like mm-hmm. like Stephen Schwartz. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, what about if they wanted to reach out and, and ask specific questions? Uh, can they reach um, out they to can, you? Or, they you can know? actually reach out to me. And my and they are apps. I encourage that. I love talking to incoming students. I'm happy to even have a call with them or Zoom or whatever they'd like. My email is uh, andrew.abrams, A-B-R-A-M-S, at siu.edu. So andrew.abrams at siu.edu. Awesome. Well, Andy, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me today and teaching us about your program. And um, I certainly know that I will be sending many students your way uh, and continue to sing your praises. Well, thank you. Um, that's it was a thrill and to be here and talk about this. And thank you for including us. We're we're so happy. Our pleasure. I will see you at Unifieds this year, sir. 
Yes, sir. You will. All right. You have a good day. You too. All right. Bye-bye. For more information on the exciting training, workshops, and masterclasses offered by The College Audition, please visit us online at www.thecollegeaudition.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok.